chemistry time. Um, chemistry I missed, time. I missed that. Uh, uh, yes. Wait, where did you do the intro? We weren't ready. I, I did do the intro no, three times. Oh, wait, do it again. Fourth is the lucky chart. Ready? Wait, okay, ready? And go. Chemistry time. <laughs> Yay! Okay, now, now our second it's intro. That's all. Awesome. Six times into the 21st. It started with, a mole is a unit, or have you heard? Containing six times into the 23rd. That's a mole six with 20 zeros at the end. Six times 10 to the 23rd. So, just like, it's a Could you hear our mole song? Okay, so. In the, this is a unit in the same way. So, I mean, we kind of have two different ways of thinking about units. So, like, when we think about something like a kilogram or a meter, that's a certain amount that we use to measure length or mass or whatever. This measures what? Do you remember from your reading class? Yeah, it, it, amount, it measures amount of something, generally particles, because particles are the only thing small enough for us to use this number usefully. And we kind of think about this, your book relates this a lot of times to dozen, because this is just a number, whereas dozen is also a number. What number does dozen represent? Twelve. Twelve. So if I say there are half a dozen students in this classroom, which is true, six. that means there are six. Right? If I said there were half a mole of students in this classroom, that would be a lot of meat in here because that would be 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. Right? And we know that that many marshmallows would be blot out the sun because it would be five miles deep, and that many students would probably, I mean, it would be a black hole. So anyway, this is... A mole is a unit that represents this many of something, usually particles. So, what do we do with this? That's the question. So, you think to yourself, maybe write on a paper, what do we do with the mole? What do we do with the mole? What do we do with a lot of the units that we have? Tell me. What do we do with the units that we have? We do two things with them, generally. We do label. Conversions, yes. That's the one we're going to do today. And what else do we do with units, usually? We use them to measure. Measure. So what we do with units is we measure things and we convert units. And the large part of what we're going to be doing, not just for this chapter, but for the next chapter as well, is conversions using the mole. Convert, what was the other one? Measure. Conversions using the mole. And it's this. In one mole, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd we say particles. What and what could these particles be? Let's let's go. Atoms. Atoms. If it is a what? Marshmallows. Hold up. What kind of thing would be made of atoms and only atoms? Um, uh, a what, what? What kind of matter would be made only of the same type of atoms? Say it. Say it. Elements. <laughs> so if it's if, if it's an element, if it's a pure element, the representative particles we call them representative particles are atoms. Okay? What other kind of particles are there and, and what kind of things are is that the representative particle of? What do we call it? What where are some other things we can have in chemistry that we talk about besides just elements? We do talk about elements. But what other kinds of things are there? What else can we write out? Okay, there could be solutions. Those can have any uh, they can have any ratio, and so we don't do this for solutions. But what other kind of stuff is there in chemistry besides just elements? I mean, we can do it at all year. Compounds. 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 I, I think it's compounds. It is compounds. And, and of the compounds, we're going to have to differentiate between them because we have uh, two different ways that we talk about that bonding can occur in compounds. Two main ways. What are they? What kind of bonding and what kind of bonding? Uh, co Cocaine. So we have covalent compounds, and we're also going to have ionic compounds. And they have different names. Their representative particles have different names. Covalent compounds, we call the representative particle, can you guess? Covalent. No, molecules. Remember we talked about this back in chapter 7. We talked about how another name for covalent bond is molecular bond. And any group of atoms that is covalently bonded together, we call a molecule. So, and then... People always read this one, but it's called a formula unit. The representative particle of an ionic compound is an Fu. Um, the yeah, other kind. Right on the bottom of my page. Speaking of, speaking of ionic compounds, 
what if what if the thing itself has a charge? We call them what? It, it, any any little atom boy that has a charge, not quite. If it has more protons than electrons, or more electrons than protons, we call it not an atom, but ion. ion. An ion. So if, if the thing is an ion, we just call them ions. So we have atoms, molecules, formula units, ions. But any of these, if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, I have one mole of molecules, right? So if I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of sodium chloride, how many moles of one. sodium chloride? One mole of sodium chloride, right? So that's our main, that's the main conversion that we do, well, that's the only conversion we do from moles to particles or back and forth. So let's do an example problem with that real quick. If I have 23 moles of water, I want to find out how many particles of water that is. So what, what, first of all, what do I call the particle that water is made out of? Think about it before you begin. What, which of these particles is water? Co okay, it is covalently bonded, so we call them what? Molecules. So I want to go from moles of water to molecules of water. Listen, and listen very carefully. With these conversions, always put the substance in the conversion. It's part of the unit, okay? So we're going to go from 23 moles of H2O. And just like we do any conversion, what do I put on the bottom now? What do I want to get rid of here? What unit? Moles. Be more careful. Molecules. Moles of H2O. And what do I want to go to? Molecules. Molecules of H2O. Make sure you include the H2O. And so what do I put on this line? Top one? Yeah. Uh, 6.02. And on the bottom one? One. One. So in one mole of water, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Take out your, is it handy dandy or handy randy? I can't remember. Handy. Calculator. Something about randy. Take out your randy calculator and then we will convert moles of water to molecules of water. As a little side note, how do we type in 6.02 times in the 23rd in our calculator? Um, 6.02. 6. Or 6.02 times 10 in the care button. That would work. It takes a long time. What I would type in. Yep. Make sure you don't press the little lowercase e represents Euler's number. Don't do that one. It's the little one that says e. On your calculator, remember? So it's going to, you type the little e button, which I think is on top of the comma on your TI 80, whatever. Yep. Um, but you're going to type in 6.02 uh, e 23. Okay, what do you get there? 1.2. Well, are we rounding or? Like? We get it to, uh, yeah, we only need two sig figs. So 1.2. 1. 1. 1. Someone say it. No, 1.38. No, 1.4, because it's two sig figs. Oh, we're doing that. 1.4 times, times 10 to the 25th. 25th what? H2O. Part. Oh, molecules of molecules. Molecules of H2O. Now that we said every noun that we've learned today, yeah. 1.4 times 10 to the 25th molecules of H2O is our answer. What did you just say? 1.4 times 10 to the 25th molecules of H2O. Okay. The next thing, the next thing. This is this is kind of nice, right? If the 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 reason this is useful is if you have a problem from your book that says convert this to this. But it's not extremely useful in the real world. Because again, if I said to you, hey, go in the lab and get me two and a half moles of iron, could you? No, because we can't really directly measure moles. What would we have to measure instead? Do you know? Your book talked about it, so I'm going to test here if you read. What? Yeah, yeah, you can measure the mass. So what we very commonly do, especially if we're doing real science with this, is we measure its mass. So in this case, let me just rewind one second. All of this was converting what to what or what to what. Yeah, moles to particles, or particles to moles. yeah, particles to moles. Right. So this is the process for doing that. Now I'm going to erase what I just wrote, and we're going to instead convert. And you need to write this down. This is your next, I don't know, heading. We're doing mass to moles, 
or yes, moles to mass. That's a big mole. That's gross. So for this, we need a conversion factor. Now listen carefully. Unlike the one we just did, these will be different for each element. So how we find them is really easy, though. We look at the periodic table. So on the periodic table, it tells us what we call the molar mass of each element. So we look up, look up molar mass of elements on the periodic table. And this unit is given to us. Sometimes it'll say AMU. I think this one says, yeah, atomic weight in AMU. But we write it as grams per mole. So the number given on the periodic table is grams per mole. For instance, you'll eventually memorize some of these on accident. For instance, nitrogen. Oh, I'm nitrogen. See him? Do you see him? No. See him? Do you see him? Yes. <laughs> Look, his molar mass, it says here, 14.0067. What I have memorized is 14.007, because it's easy to memorize, and because it's round. So if I wanted to find, so for instance, if I had, let's say, 29 grams of nitrogen, and I want to convert that to moles of nitrogen. 29 grams of nitrogen, two moles of nitrogen. What should I do first, you reckon? Wait, what's that O in the little one? What should I do first, you reckon? You have to set up your take like your Okay, nitrogen. so what should I write first? 29 grams. 29 grams nitrogen. Make sure. And you put gray. Make sure you put the substance. It has to have a substance with it. And then you draw a line. And line on top you have. Do the bottom first. Because of what I want to do. You have grams of nitrogen. Grams of nitrogen too. And then you have mole nitrogen. Moles of nitrogen. And in one mole of nitrogen, how many grams is it? I just told you. 14.007. Listen, this that number on the periodic table, like I said, is grams per mole. So that one goes with grams. The number you read up there is grams in one mole. Okay? Now we convert. Mathy time. Time to do some methamphetamine. I went too early. Two point two, 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 two sig figs. It's only two got two. Point one. Two point one what? 2.1 Okay, now someone is going to say, oh, Mr. Kahn, there's something wrong with this, and there is. What's the, what's the matter with this whole thing? Yeah, you do. You might not, but the rest of you should. Specifically, there's a problem with nitrogen. It's not in two. It has to be in two, right? We know that nitrogen always exists as in two. So what do we do? The next thing is, what do we do? What do we do if it's a compound instead of just an atom? Can you guess? It's really easy. Instead of it being, we just, yeah, we just add them together. So here we have, and you have to show this work, but for N2, we just do N2 equals 14.007 grams per mole times 2. So the answer is N2 equals 28.014 grams per mole. Right? Wait, um, is that, can you rewrite that better? Yeah. What does okay, it say after 2? 14.007. Grams per mole. No, grams, grams per mole. This is the lowercase letter T. Does that clear up all the confusion? Equals 28. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just multiplied it by 2. So now, if I had 29 in reality, if I had 29 grams of nitrogen, which is in 2, I would now instead convert it from still grams to moles. But now it's 28.014 grams in one mole. And it's going to be approximately 1.1. 1. 1. 1, I think it's what it comes out as. We use six fix. 1.03. So oh, 1.03. So 1.0. <sighs> Do you see why we did that and how? We're going to do another example of this to make it more clear. But you have questions about this as it is. So this is how we convert between mass and moles for atoms. 
And if it's a compound, if it's anything other than just one atom, we have to do this addition to it. Okay, so let's move on to another example problem because this is the best way to do these. We still use the molar masses from the periodic table. We just have to add them together for a compound. So let's do, instead of for a single atom now, let's, let's say we have, say we have 4.1 moles of carbon dioxide. And I want to find how many grams of carbon dioxide that is. Okay? So far, so good, right? We haven't done any math yet, but so far, so good. We're going to find how many what? Grams of carbon dioxide. So we're converting from moles to mass. Now, the first thing you should do is show your work to adding it up. So what I always write is this, and you need to write, I wouldn't, I mean, you can figure out your own thing, but this is what I'm going to tell you is correct, and so you, you, there are other ways to do this, but this is what you need to do for me. So C equals, and O equals, right, because it's made of two things, carbon dioxide is, carbon and oxygen. So we're going to find the molar mass of carbon, we're going to find the molar mass of oxygen, okay? What's the molar mass of carbon? I know what it is, tell me if you know what it is. Is there another place we can look for this instead of just on the wall? No. Nope. Mm, lies. Yeah, get out your own periodic table. If a periodic table has only one thing on it, it'll be the molar mass, I guarantee you. What are we looking for, carbon? We already found carbon. Now we need to find oxygen. 15.999. 15.999 grams per mole. Now hold up. Because because what else? Well, I have to do one other thing before I put them together. I have to multiply the oxygen by two. Do you see why? Yep, because it's it's a diatomic. Because it's it, mm, that's not why. That's because because there's two in this substance. It is diatomic, but that's not why in this substance. So then I write my answer is going to be CO two equals. So sh write it up. Thirty one. Oh, plus the twelve. Okay, I got 44.009. Yep. So 44.0 what? Mole. Nope. Grams per mole. Grams per mole. So that's just step one. That still hasn't solved the problem, right? But what I did was now I found the molar mass. We call this molar mass. You need to write that down somewhere. I found the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Okay? How do you find the molar mass of carbon dioxide? You add together the molar mass of carbon with the molar mass of oxygen times two, because there are two oxygens. So now that I have the molar mass of carbon dioxide, I just do my conversion as I did before. 4.01, sorry, 4.1 moles of CO2. What am I trying to get rid of? Moles of CO2. What am I trying to go to? Grams. Grams of CO2. And how many grams are in a mole of CO2? Yep, 44.0. That's what we just found. 44.0 grams in one mole. Okay, now we do the mathy math. The math itself is very easy. When we get rid of all the units, all we just type in our calculator is 4.1 times 44, which is? 180.4. 180 what? Grams per mole. Grams. Mole. Just, yeah. It's grams of CO2. Why and not moles? Because we, in this case, we were given moles and went to oh. grams. And so our answer had to be in grams as well. They have to match. So we can, listen please, we can do three things now. Well, really we can do six things. We can go from moles to particles and particles to moles, right? You remember that part? We can go from grams to moles and moles to grams of elements, and we can go from grams to moles and moles to grams of compounds, right? Yes. This part, generally if someone's going to forget something, it's going to be this part where they add these together. Can you do this? I know you can, I just watched you do it. Can you do it? Though? Tell me you can. Yes. Yes what? Yes sir. Yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, Mr. Kahn. Any of those is acceptable. Yes. Um, let's do, I'm going to stop the video here in a second, but after that we're all going to together what? do number, let's do 40, I'm on page 337, so turn to page 337, and we're going to do 40A together. Thank you guys.